welcome to the uh, 20th annual summer program in social and cultural psychiatry. Every year, uh, the Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry at McGill, as part of this activity, has an advanced study institute on a particular topic. Uh, here are the previous uh, themes for the advanced study institutes. And um, the previous advanced study institutes, I should say, are online uh, the last couple of years. You can find the videos if they interest you. So the topic for this meeting uh, is uh, the politics of diversity. And our concern really is with uh, um, social processes of inclusion and of exclusion. Uh, and in particular, how is diversity uh, and a sense of otherness within that diversity uh, constructed through social, political, and psychological processes? And we hope to be able to touch on each of those uh, over the uh, next three days. Today, uh, our discussion in the morning will be mainly social and political, and in the afternoon we'll have uh, more of a psychological orientation coming in part from uh, practitioners uh, who are uh, trying to address the issues that we'll be raising in their everyday clinical work and in their efforts to devise um, meaningful responses. Uh, so there's a progression, there'll be a progression throughout the day from looking at the larger frames, social institutional frames that create uh, identity and difference toward the clinical uh, issues of trying to work with people at times of uh, suffering and distress to uh, uh, provide a meaningful response. Uh, and these are the sort of four broad questions that we posed to the uh, presenters, uh, and uh, it'll be uh, approached uh, in different ways uh, by our presenters. The issues that we're facing really are, um, as I say, both social and political and uh, very intimate and uh, um, personal in the sense of aspects of people's identity that they hold most dear and for which they hope to have some level of recognition. Uh, from others in society and from the major institutions of society. And when those processes of recognition and acknowledgement uh, are challenged, when they uh, undergo um, uh, various kinds of uh, restrictions and um, uh, alterations, it poses dilemmas for communities in society and for individuals. And this is kind of what we've lived through uh, in since uh, last September here very uh, explicitly and openly, and it's the uh, motivation underlying this, uh, this work, uh, this, this conference, and I'm going to say just a few words about that, hopefully, to um, uh, put some common images uh, in everyone's mind, and uh, for those of you who are not from uh, Quebec, uh, who've not uh, lived through this, this recent um, uh, debate and uh, confrontation, uh, it will uh, give you a sense of, of our own local concerns, but as I say, we're very interested in, in how these uh, may mirror or differ uh, from the debates and from the experiences going on in very different places uh, in, in the world. So uh, last uh, September, we had a, a, uh, our provincial government, a minority government, uh, uh, tabled uh, initially a proposal for a charter of Quebec values, then a, a bill uh, that would uh, limit the expression, ostentatious expression of religious uh, clothing and other symbols uh, among public servants in public places. Uh, the idea being that Quebec should be a secular society and that this needed somehow to be affirmed, if not enforced, uh, through law. And they produced this example of uh, acceptable and unacceptable displays of religious uh, symbolism. Uh, this uh, was a matter of some concern to people. Uh, 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 various uh, religious and other uh, backgrounds, as well as people uh, who themselves are not religious but are sympathetic to the uh, ideas of uh, freedom of religion, freedom of expression. Uh, and uh, there was some uh, organized protest. Uh, there were counter protests. Uh, and uh, we, uh, as a small uh, marginal group in this process, uh, uh, took a position of advocacy uh, on behalf of cultural psychiatry at McGill, and we, many people in the division and the chair of our department and so on uh, signed this uh, letter to the uh, newspaper. It was sent to all the newspapers. The only one that decided to publish it was the English language uh, newspaper, uh, arguing for um, the, well, arguing against the charter and against this proposal to restrict religious freedoms from what we thought was a slightly different set of arguments that were on the table. 
uh, not the human rights arguments and not the legal arguments, uh, but a set, set of mental health concerns, uh, notions of what uh, impact uh, this kind of legislation would have on the well-being of minorities, on intergroup relations, and on our own work uh, in terms of people's comfort with healthcare institutions and so on. So we thought that those were an important set of considerations. Interestingly, the, the thing that we said that ended up being the most contentious was a, a kind of um, en passant remark that uh, religiosity can be a source of strength and resilience for people. Uh, this uh, observation, which is a matter of, uh, I guess we can say scientific fact as well as clinical observation. I mean, religiosity can be a problem and a, a boon for people. It can be both, and there's literature to show both. Uh, got jumped on by various uh, blog, uh, bloggers and uh, email responders. One of the lessons from this little uh, um, excursion into public media was who has the time to write responses to a letter t to the editor, uh, and it it is pretty uh, discouraging. Maybe we'll have some discussion. In fact, the film this evening is very much around the process of um, uh, public debate uh, as a, a democratic process and the dilemmas it poses in terms of who has the time and energy uh, to make public res representations. It's not always the most uh, balanced or considered positions that, that have the most uh, uh, heat and, and forceful expression in, when, when these spaces are opened up in, in society. So just to say that this was uh, an issue that was very important to many of us uh, in the field of uh, cultural psychiatry and uh, more broadly in, in mental health services and in healthcare, uh, this hospital, the director general of this hospital, uh, uh, and, uh, 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 produced a statement early on in this process uh, declaring that they were not, not only not in favor of the charter, but were these laws to be passed, they would disobey them. So rather dramatic uh, for this society, uh, uh, expressions of uh, potential civil disobedience uh, and quite a lot of solidarity among uh, many people um, uh, sharing common uh, concerns. And I guess I should also say, and you'll hear it running as a thread throughout some of the presentations today, that for many of us, uh, this particular um, uh, proposed uh, set of laws and, and uh, um, uh, set of issues that were being raised struck us very, very personally, uh, that we felt uh, quite threatened and quite frightened on some level about what this was saying about our society and where this could go, uh, and partly because there seemed to be quite a lot of popular support uh, for the uh, Charter, uh, particularly outside the island of Montreal, but really across many sectors of society. Uh, and this had to do partly with how, uh, how the problem was framed. Uh, the problem was framed very much as uh, a need for secularism to protect us against fundamentalism, against uh, uh, gender violence, against all kinds of inequities that many of us are equally passionately uh, um, uh, concerned about, uh, but that the uh, restrictions on religious expression were seen as some kind of a preventive measure against uh, far worse that would, would come if these uh, steps were not taken. At the same time as this has happened, there have been other things going on, and I think it also helps us to understand some of the uh, political changes and challenges as uh, part of larger, uh, both local and global concerns. So at the same time, uh, the federal government in Canada has uh, 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 seriously restricted the health care available to uh, refugee claimants uh, in Canada. Uh, and this, again, was uh, framed very much and, and argued for, and, and uh, they were able to mobilize uh, popular support by portraying the refugee as uh, an, uh, an other, an outsider, uh, trying to unjustly, uh, you know, uh, fake their way into the country and claim resources and get better health care than the average Canadian, uh, most of which arguments were not well-founded, but which certainly struck a chord uh, with uh, many segments of society so that the government could uh, successfully pass this legislation. And uh, many provinces, Quebec uh, first, in fact, uh, have taken up the slack and, and developed their own programs uh, to provide some of the missing health care uh, that the federal government has uh, reneged on. But it represents a serious backtracking in terms of Canada's uh, commitment to human rights and to refugee, uh, international refugee uh, 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 law. And uh, it's uh, really, again, a sad day that I think speaks uh, to larger social changes. Interestingly enough, uh, this uh, particular um, inter set of interventions by the government evoked unanimous condemnation across the board from all 
uh, kinds of medical professional organizations and institutions. And there have been very few events that have uh, evoked such unanimous uh, rejection. So that gives us some, some heart and some, uh, uh, some sense of solidarity as uh, professions. But uh, it has not been uh, very successful in, in getting the government to backtrack completely, although there were some changes that were made. Now, um, in recent years, uh, the newspapers have often been uh, filled with reports from uh, typically various parts of Europe, Germany, the UK, and so on, with people declaring the death of multiculturalism uh, as a failed policy. And I just wanted to rehearse very briefly uh, something about our own version of multiculturalism, which differs and for which some of the critiques that are marshaled in, in Europe uh, may not be entirely apposite. And um, I think it's worth considering these briefly. Uh, Canada was the first country with an official policy of multiculturalism. We need to distinguish when we talk about multiculturalism between multiculturalism as a demographic fact, that is to say we have multi-ethnic, multicultural society with m many diverse people, and that's true here as in many or most places in the world. Uh, in fact, there are many places that are even more diverse than our, our society. And multiculturalism as a set of policies in which the state in some ways embraces the idea of diversity within the population and even uh, puts resources into maintaining or supporting uh, ethnocultural communities in some sense. Uh, so Canada, uh, as I say, uh, was the first country to begin to articulate such policies and to uh, develop such programs. Uh, and that reflects some of the realities of our society in terms of this long-standing fact of a high level of diversity being uh, the historical reality of Canada. Uh, the, um, the proportion of people who've been foreign-born, as you see going back to 1871, uh, has consistently run uh, around uh, 15 to 20 percent. Uh, so that's a, a, an everyday reality that keeps getting renewed in Canada, uh, that we're always faced with newcomers and with um, a, a high level of people, one in five people roughly, on the streets who are from elsewhere. And that's woven into a sense of Canadian identity uh, in a very significant way. Of course, that plays out against uh, other uh, themes in identity. <clears throat> and in particular, the fact that the older migration to Canada was largely uh, from um, Europe, the uh, sort of greenish uh, bar on the left, and that the new migration is primarily from Asia, uh, the uh, light green bar on the right. So you see the shift in pattern of migration, uh, even though the levels are comparable, uh, which makes for perhaps greater cultural distance to the extent that we can talk about some kind of simple metric of cultural difference and, 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 uh, uh, and therefore uh, has led to new kinds of debates and new kinds of anxieties, new kinds of challenges in our healthcare system. Here's another way to look at the same, uh, the same data uh, just as percentages of migration and you can see uh, the shift that's gone on uh, in terms of who is coming to Canada uh, and that is, I think, the backdrop for this larger uh, debate, at least uh, nationally. Uh, Canadian multiculturalism, I think, reflects to some degree, may have contributed uh, to, back to uh, certain attitudes. Uh, but I just wanted to put this up because in our debate in Quebec, uh, there was a tendency to invoke other countries, in particular to invoke France as a positive model and Britain as a negative model. Uh, and uh, whatever the sort of rhetorical uh, um, uh, choices that are being made in, in bringing forward those examples, it's important to recognize that there are huge differences historically, policy-wise, and here you can see attitude-wise uh, in terms of uh, these, uh, these uh, social spaces. Uh, so uh, this is from the World Values Survey, kind of sociological survey that's done in uh, many countries around the world, and you can see the little red uh, bar on the left is uh, Canada. Uh, the, on the far right, uh, the light blue bar is uh, France. And you can see uh, the United States and Great Britain somewhere in the middle. This is uh, how many respondents would not like to have immigrants or foreign workers as neighbors. Uh, here's the same kind of uh, information for uh, respondents who would not like people who speak a different language as neighbors. And again, you see Canada compared to these other three as uh, kind of uh, at the extreme end of tolerance. Uh, and then people of a different religion. Uh, here, Canada, United States, uh, UK are all clustered together at the left. 
uh, and here is people of a different race. So I think it's important to understand that for whatever reasons, historical and otherwise, uh, we're in a slightly different environment in terms of prevalent attitudes of people. Whatever, uh, whatever has led to this, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's so much a production of the policy of multiculturalism or any other thing like that. I think, in fact, we could argue that the policy of multiculturalism is a reflection of these uh, attitudes that have emerged over time that reflect a distinctive Canadian history and context. Um, Notwithstanding the, the claims that multiculturalism in Canada, at least, has been some, something of a success over time, or at least reflects uh, some kind of uh, uh, peaceable kingdom of people coexisting despite a high level of diversity, um, there is a considerable critique of the idea of multiculturalism coming from different quarters. Uh, the first bunch of these, uh, the first uh, five of these, come uh, are summarized from the book by um, uh, Ryan, who collects the, the sort of newspaper critiques in Canada of multiculturalism, in which multiculturalism is typically blamed for everything uh, from the, the left to the right kind of uh, in terms of contemporary policy. And he points out how little evidence there is that multiculturalism is responsible for any of those things, but how much uh, there is a kind of both conservative and a uh, liberal or radical critique of uh, the perils of multiculturalism as something that will not promote integration. And that will lead to isolated communities that are not engaging, that will lead to a kind of unmooring of our uh, collective values and the kind of uh, uh, relativism, the kind of relativism which anything goes, that it will lead uh, to uh, the suppression of uh, gender rights uh, because group rights will be uh, preferenced uh, and it doesn't give us any guidelines for how to deal with areas of conflict. Um, there's another set of critiques that comes uh, uh, particularly uh, from European contexts, and here I'm just summarizing uh, the key points made by Keenan Malik, uh, one of several vocal critiques of multiculturalism as it's been articulated in uh, Europe and in the UK in particular. And his concern is that when the state begins to support the idea of culture, uh, it becomes engaged in reifying and essentializing culture, in sort of uh, becoming the policing the boundaries of groups, choosing or creating a structure in which there's some process of choosing who gets to speak for particular groups. And the reality of cultures and communities is that no one person can speak for those communities, that they have porous boundaries, that there are many different points of view. And so multiculturalism ends up making a lot of mischief uh, because of uh, its institutional force. So I hope throughout the day we're going to hear some uh, reflections and discussions about these different larger frames uh, that uh, try to configure society in ways that uh, um, help us uh, to negotiate the issue of uh, diversity. Quebec, in fact, has, uh, does not embrace the, the formal policy of multiculturalism uh, because it, uh, it, the concern is that in that framework, uh, Franco-Quebecois culture would be just another culture among others, uh, and that's not uh, a viable option. Uh, so uh, instead, people have used the metaphor of interculturalism, uh, implying a kind of dialogical process or encounter between different cultural groups in which presumably one of those poles in the intercultural exchange is uh, uh, French-Quebecois culture. Uh, and uh, the dilemma is, is that this intercultural dialogue uh, is framed uh, or ends up being very much an unequal dialogue. And we saw that quite clearly in the chartered debate, even in the, the mechanics of the consultations, the, the, the process of the consultations in which uh, the, uh, the chair, the, um, um, Bernard Dranville uh, really uh, antagonized and uh, rejected a lot of uh, arguments that were made uh, uh, in terms of trying to protect uh, religious communities. So uh, there was no uh, qualms about exerting uh, the power of the government in that context. Interestingly enough, the concerns that occur in Quebec occur despite the fact that uh, Quebec uh, is, uh, really has about half uh, the level of, uh, of uh, foreign-born uh, people uh, uh, as the Canadian average. So it's even though we view this as a very diverse space, and certainly Montreal in particular is a very diverse space, overall compared to other parts of Canada, this is not uh, anywhere near the most diverse uh, kind of environment. And yet there's intense anxiety uh, about the other. And we've had a whole series of events, again, which we'll hear about today and some in the film this evening uh, that have been important uh, um, uh, moments in this uh, debate in this process. 
So the argument from the point of view of healthcare is that because we are meeting people at the level of their lived experience in their local world, we have certain insights into their predicament. We have certain empathy uh, and understanding of the ways in which they're experiencing and negotiating uh, these conflicts in the larger society. And we are mandated in some ways uh, to speak on their behalf, to advocate for them, to try to uh, address the uh, uh, inequities in the healthcare system to ensure that people get adequate care and that the social stressors uh, and forms of uh, structural violence and uh, aggression, microaggression. I'm not sure if somebody tries to grab your hijab and yank it off your head. I'm not sure if that qualifies as microaggression or macroaggression or major aggression at that point. Uh, I think it's like on the edge of assault and battery, or if not on the edge. Uh, so uh, we have real concerns about that kind of uh, impact in people's lives. Nevertheless, uh, Although I think my bias is clear in this whole discussion of wanting to protect uh, the people I see as the most uh, vulnerable in this uh, situation, we need to acknowledge that there are real dilemmas and real debates in terms of other issues that are interconnected uh, and that are mobilized in the debate around diversity, concerns about violence toward women uh, as a global phenomenon that uh, is sometimes framed in these terms, concerns about free speech and about the uh, space needed to construct uh, critiques, whether they're artistic or political, of uh, existing uh, frameworks. Uh, and my hope is that by creating a space here where we can have uh, some dialogue around these issues and think through some of the different perspectives and the challenges, that we can contribute in some small way to uh, advancing uh, this discussion. <laughs>